Hi, it's Alaska Granny. It's cold here in Alaska. It was 13 degrees this morning and the sun's not coming up till at least nine o'clock. And so it was a good day to put in an order for Walmart pickup. So I could snuggle into the heated up car and have someone else run out and put it in. I don't even have to go in the store and worry about crowds or high prices. You can deal with the prices when you're ordering things. I haven't always been a fan of the Walmart online ordering, the drive up and pick it up, simply because so many times I don't get what I want. So was I ever surprised when every single thing on my order was available and when I picked it up, it was all still there. I don't believe that that's ever happened. I was pleasantly surprised. Now, of course, prices are rising wherever you live. That's just the way it is. And so any politicians that try to tell you that inflation and rising prices just are something that seems that way or people are talking about it. If you've been to the grocery store, if you've been to the gas station, if you've paid your uh, power bill, you know that prices are up and everything costs more. The amount of money that we budgeted in the past just doesn't go as far as it used to. But that's just part of living. And one of the reasons it's important to then prepare. <coughs> oh, what's the matter? Oh my God, there's mooses in the driveway. Good boy, Teddy. Good boy, Teddy. Teddy coughed. Teddy barked up some mooses in the driveway. Look at that, Teddy. They're coming right this way. So mommy had a baby. Don't scare him. Don't scare him, don't scare him Ted. That's part of the fun of living in Alaska. You just never know what's going to happen on any particular day. Anyway, thank you, Teddy, for barking up the moose. He has a different bark for when there's a moose or a bear or even a porcupine than he just has for a uh, birds or people or cars. And so uh, that was a good one, wasn't it? Good job, Teddy. So luckily on Teddy's behalf, I was able to get a 10 pound bag of his favorite dog food. They actually had it in stock. I've been trying to buy this Caesars rotisserie chicken flavored dog food for quite some time and I haven't been able to get it. The last time I needed to buy dog food for him because I was nearly out, I bought a different brand, which he likes it okay, but he likes this much better, and he digs into this one with much more gusto. If you have pets, make sure that you're stocking up on their food too, but don't go overboard because food's not gonna last forever. If you have a tiny dog like this one, don't buy 100 pounds of food, because likely it will become stale or rancid before he can eat it up. You want to have a reasonable amount that you can rotate within a few months. Next, I picked up a bag of the 15 bean soup. This one is just nice. It has all different kinds of flavors and variety in it, and it's something that is easy to make. The spices are already in it. You can add a little more if you like. You can even toss in a ham bone, a can of ham, even some bacon. Anything that you want will change the flavor just a little bit, and it's simple to make a nice big pot of soup. I made a video on how to make the 15 bean soup and I'll put a link to that video if it's something that you're interested in. I picked up eight cans of the Campbell's Chunky Pub Style Chicken Pot Pie Soup. It's something that I enjoy. It's simple to just zap it in the microwave. It's ready to eat it right out of the can. You don't have to do anything to it to serve it except heat it up. But if it's a real emergency and you couldn't heat it up, you could eat it. It's not gonna be as tasty but it's an already prepared meal and those are the types of foods that you want to have in your prepper pantry. And then a great idea is to have some kind of an emergency stove so you can heat these foods up if you lose power and you need to have a way to heat and cook your food. I bought four cans of chicken broth. It's an easy thing to have in your prepper pantry. I like to buy it in a can rather than the carton simply because the carton is made out of cardboard. Plus the cans are smaller and I don't always make huge meals for a big family so I don't always need a whole quart of it at a time. If you have big bones left over from meals that you prepared, put them in your crock pot and make your own broth out of them. I'll put a link to a video I've made on how to make bone broth if that's something that you're interested in. It helps you stretch your food dollars with just the leftovers. You're making food out of something that most people would just throw away and you don't have to if you know how to make bone broth. 
I really like the great value dried bananas. These are so handy to have a serving of bananas, which are extremely hard to get in a really good, delicious, fresh banana when you live somewhere like Alaska. And you can have then a nice, tasty serving of bananas anytime you want. These were harder to get a while ago. I couldn't get them at all, and I bought some more expensive ones at, I think it was Fred Meyer's or Safeway, which is Cars here, and they weren't anywhere near as good as these. So if you haven't tried these, check it out. You get a nice big bag of yummy, delicious fruit that's already dried and can last in your pantry for quite a while. I bought six bags of them. I bought one can of sliced pineapple. If you've watched my channel at all, you know that I am not a fan of storing canned pineapple any length of time because I've had terrible luck with the cans exploding, leaking, uh, just not lasting. And pineapple has just been the, the thing that I can't store simply because of all the problems that I've had with it. So I don't like to keep extra on hand. I did have some pineapple in my pantry. Recently, I took it all out and I dehydrated it. And that was a great way to do it. The pineapple is tasty, it's delicious, and it can last then in a jar in the pantry for longer. It's still not gonna last forever, but it certainly helped me to extend the life of the canned food that I wasn't sure should be kept in the can any longer, simply because I was concerned that the can would disintegrate because pineapples are very acidic. I also have a recipe idea of how I'm going to use the pineapple rings, and that's why I chose the rings rather than any other kind of shape. I bought four packages of the Quaker rice cakes. These are a white cheddar flavor. I tried them a while ago, and they're absolutely delicious. It's something you can just pull out of the bag. It's nice and tasty. I was surprised how delicious it is because when they first started making rice cakes, it was like eating a piece of cardboard or styrofoam, but these have a delicious flavor. And you know what's nice about them is they don't really get stale. They're double wrapped. You can keep them in the pantry for quite a long time, and then you have a, a nice snack that you can pull out. It's filling and it doesn't have to have a whole lot of calories like other kind of crackers do. And then they're very delicious. Plus a rice cake is something that you can use to make a sandwich if you want. It's sturdy enough that you can use it in place of what you would say bread or a bun and then you can have a nice delicious crunchy yummy meal out of your rice cakes. I bought a double pack of the Suddenly Salad. It's something that I like to keep on hand in my prepper pantry and I recently used some. Maybe you saw the video I made on how I made a meal with the Suddenly Salad. I'll put a link to that video so you can check it out if you want to know what's a quick way to make a pantry meal right out of this, out of your pantry, by adding just a few other simple ingredients. I like to take these out of the box and I store them into a clean canning jar, seal it up, just tighten the lid. You don't have to use an oxygen absorber and I find that it lasts a few extra years this way. Finally, cranberries or dried craisins, they have not had any for a few months here in Alaska and so I was happy to find them at a wonderful price at Walmart. The price on dried cranberries can vary dramatically, so you wanna pay attention to the unit price. Compare the price per ounce or the price per pound so that you know if you're really getting a good deal when you're shopping for your food. Do that not just with these, but with any kind of food. Read the little fine print on the label for what is the unit price and figure out which one is going to be the most food for the least amount of money and that's an easy way to help fill your pantry with a little bit more food for not quite as much money. Don't worry about prepping your food pantry and adding to your stockpile that it's not enough time or that things are too expensive. Just add one or two items every time you go to the store. Add a few dollars into your grocery budget and make it foods that can last in your pantry not because you're putting it away to last for 30 years. And I've been surprised at some of the comments that people think prepping is having 30 years worth of food, and that's absolutely not what it is. It's having food in your pantry so you can feed your family for a week or two, couple of months for the long haul. And then if there's a huge emergency, you have some longest lasting stored food that can last for 30 years. It doesn't mean you need 30 years worth of rice and beans, but you can have it in your prepper pantry. 
you can rotate it and use it and make meals out of it or you can keep those foods put away in your long-term food storage for when you actually have an emergency or there's nothing else that you can get you'll still have those basic foods to fall back on I don't think there's ever going to come a time when there's no food available. You can always grow a few things in your yard, in your garden, on your windowsill. There's always going to be things in the store that we'll be able to get. But look at what's going on in some of the other countries in the world. They may have some food in the grocery store, but the quality and the quantity is limited and the prices have become astronomical. So having extra food set aside gives you the time to figure out how I can continue to feed my family while I figure out what else can I get, what else can I do? How can I provide more with what I have available to me? And that's why you want to be a prepper. You want to make your life run as smoothly as possible to keep things for your family going the best that you can. That's all any of us want. And so that's why I'm a prepper and I think it would be a great idea if everybody stockpiled a little bit of food at a time. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.